Hello, this is Robin Worley and welcome to Lenscraft. At the weekend, I upgraded my Adobe Creative Cloud installs, like I suspect many of you have. And this involved upgrading to Photoshop 2018 and also to upgrade to what Adobe have renamed Lightroom Classic Creative Cloud. Quite why they've chosen that name, I'm not sure. But anyway, there were a couple of interesting features in this install, and I wanted to share one of them with you today, which is the fact that Adobe has included now luminosity masking into Lightroom. Now, you might wonder why on earth they've bothered to do this, given that in Lightroom, you've got all these highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, sliders, which allow you to target tonal ranges in your image. Well, I thought that too, and it was only when I came to use this that I realized how useful it was. So here we've got an image that I shot at the weekend. It's up on Saddleworth Moor and Storm Brian was just coming in and I had to grab a couple of shots quickly because the weather turned rather nasty quite quickly after this. But let's have a look at it and let's see how this works. So the image has already been processed in Nick Silver Effects Pro and I've just taken the default processing or conversion in that software. I've not done anything else to it, just taken that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually select the sky because I like the sky, but this over on the left is dark, but not quite dark enough. The white area here or the light area, actually it's got quite a lot of cloud definition in there that I want to enhance further, but I also don't want to turn the whites completely white and lose detail. So I'm going to start off by adding a gradient filter and I'll show you how this works. So that's the selection made. I'll just put the mask on so you can see what I've selected. Now, once you've made a selection with either the gradient tool, the radial gradient filter, or the selection brush, what you'll see is this new range mask. Now, at the moment, that says off, but you can actually switch to making a color selection or a luminance selection. Now, in this case, I'm interested in creating some effects of um, the tonal ranges. So I'm going to use the luminance mask and that will allow me to select either dark areas, light areas in the image. What you get here is this range slider and this is the black point in the range and this is the white point in the range. So what you can actually do is move this slider over to the right. And as you do that, you'll notice that the areas selected up here in the clouds are actually where they're dark, now aren't being selected. And that's because I've reduced the range away from the shadows so that only the higher highlights are selected. And you can do the opposite from the other end, which is just select the darker areas. You also get this slider at the bottom here. And this is a smoothness slider, and you can think of it as being the equivalent of a feathering effect on the mask. So if I move this over to the left, you can see we get very well-defined edges here around the areas that are no longer selected. If I move it over to the right, the darker areas are still selected, but to a lesser degree because I'm now feathering the selected areas over these dark tones. Now I'm going to actually start with it somewhere in the middle. And what I want to do here is I want to still apply an effect to the dark areas, but not so much as to the lighter areas. And I also want to keep away from the whites so that I don't turn them completely white. And I also do want to add some feathering in so that I blend these adjustments quite well. That's my selection made. I'm just going to now turn off the overlay mask and I'm going to start to apply some adjustments. So the first thing I want to do is boost my contrast in these areas. I'm applying quite a strong amount of contrast here. And I'm also going to reduce my exposure very slightly and that brings down now the uh, the white areas to add more detail here or make it more visible but I don't affect the whites in there I keep the white staying the same 
just as also I hear I don't affect the dark areas because I don't want to turn them black. Now I'm also going to add in some dehaze which is my favourite adjustment for bringing skies into sharp focus and there we can see we've added in some nice detail into the storm clouds here and I'll also boost that a little bit further with some clarity adjustment. Now I'm seeing here that these clouds may be looking a little bit too dark so I can adjust my mask further so that it doesn't have much so much as an effect and I'll also reduce the smoothness slightly so I'm now getting quite a nice uh, range of adjustment there. So I'll now click done and you can have a look before in the before and after so you can see here the sky is now looking much more defined and it's got a great deal of texture in it which sort of matches the grasses you can see down here. I'll just switch back to my full screen and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually improve the vignette around the image. Now the vignette itself was added previously using the vin vignette effect in Lightroom. This time what I'm going to do is use the selection brush. I'm going to again turn on my mask and I'm going to make the flow probably around 40 so that I can um, make multiple keystrokes here to select things. So I'm just going to now enlarge my slider and make some effects or sorry make some selections here. So I'm doing multiple keys or brush strokes here to create the selection So I'm just making a selection here rather randomly to uh, to create the vignetting effect just around the image. Okay, so that's made the effect or the selection and I can now apply my adjustments to it. So again that's darkening the effect. I'll add a little bit more contrast. I'll add a little bit of clarity and dehaze just to really boost the edges of the scene. But it's made some of the areas look quite dark and black. So I can actually now switch back to my luminance slider here and I can now use that to adjust where I'm going to affect the areas. So I definitely don't want to create the effect so that it turns the edges black. I only want dark. And again, I can use the smoothness slider just to blur that slightly. Now, the thing that's happened here is, whilst I've toned my effects down, I've also made them a little weaker. So I'm actually going to boost those a little bit further, a bit more contrast, and I'm going to add boost the shadows slightly and I'm also going to push up the highlights in those areas as well. So that allows me to create quite a subtle vignette around the edges of the image focusing attention into this central part here and I can now create a new brush and I'm going to make another selection now onto these rocks and into the central part of the image where I really want to draw the viewer's attention. So I'm just making multiple brush strokes now just to select this in. It's it's very very rough what I'm doing here um, but you'll notice the effect in a minute. And I'm again going to use the luminance mask and I'm going to use the range something along these lines here to make sure that I'm sticking to the mid-tones because it's the mid-tones that I really want to enhance and draw the viewer's attention. So again adding in my contrast, darkening the exposure slightly, maybe I'll just darken the highlights there, push the whites up, add in the clarity and also a little bit of dehaze, maybe 
add some more exposure back and reduce the contrast. So I'm actually drawing the viewer's attention to this area here, which is the sharpest part of the image and the focus. So I've now created quite a nice effect just with a few easy adjustments and the luminance sliders in the new masking feature. We can check the difference between the new and the old. And as you can see, the new version here is far more dramatic than the other process version I had. Hope you found that interesting and useful and if you've got Lightroom 2018 or rather Adobe Lightroom Classic Creative Cloud as it's now called, you might want to try these features out. Thanks for watching.